Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Ryan Godrick and today I bring you the host of this week's Gwent Challenger number five, Ash. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is the first interview of our interview lines where we want to uh, give a bit more spotlight to the people behind the scenes and working also in front of the camera, but obviously you're not competing for the 100,000, so <laughs> Sadly. you've got a different job, which is also really awesome, and mm -hmm. yeah, we want to show that to the people. So um, why don't you start with introducing yourself, because mm -hmm. the last event has been a while, and I think you haven't hosted an official Gwent tournament, but yes. you have some experience in that regard, yes, right? Yes, I do. Um, so I started working uh, with CDPR back in 2016, actually. So that was before Gwent actually came out, even in closed beta. So I was invited uh, to Gamescom. Right. So that was the first official uh, Gwent public airing. They had a, a large booth there, and I was cosplaying as Yennefer. Um, so I was invited by CD Projekt along uh, in a cosplaying capacity. But when I was on the stand, I got to meet a lot of the familiar faces that we know um, from you know, the behind the scenes, the devs that, that we know and love from mm. the game today. So I met, I, I got the, the privilege of meeting Bouja there, who introduced me to Scoyatel um, and you know, taught me all about the game. And then pretty much uh, a couple of weeks later, Gwent came out in closed beta and that's when I started playing it on Twitch as well. And oh, yeah. yeah, things pretty much led from there. So I started streaming the game and then in the following June, I believe it was, I was asked to host the official uh, CD Projekt Red YouTube show called A Round of Gwent. Oh yeah, I love that show. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, so that was really, really fun. Um, that was filmed at the studio here in Warsaw and I got to interview all different sorts of devs, you know, animators, level designers, everything, um, including, uh, you know, big names like Marcin Nowinski and um, Sama as well, who, mm. you know, is, is running the game at the moment. So yeah, lots of big names there and learning about what went into Gwent and you know the design decisions that were made during closed beta so I did a lot of that um, and then subsequently in the same year in 2017 um, I was asked to host the official licensed tournaments hosted by Life Coach out in Vienna in Austria oh, so that yeah. was my first experience hosting Gwent. Good times. Mm -hmm. You can look that up on YouTube as well. There's still some great footage of uh, the Life Coach mansion. <laughs> Mm. You're all enjoying yourselves. Mm -hmm. As you said, you started off, or your relationship to CDPR started off with your fabulous cosplay of Yennefer <laughs> at Gamescom, and then um, the really fun Gwent, what was it called? The Round of Gwent? Mm -hmm. The Round of Gwent. And uh, did you ever believe that this was the road you were going to go down? Like hosting a major challenger tournament <laughs> of the Gwent series? Or in mm -hmm. general, being an esports host? Was that was something you wanted to do? Well, it's not what I expected at all. So at the time when I was asked, um, I had been cosplaying for a while. I started when I was pretty young, but I had kind of dabbled in Twitch, but only in a cosplay capacity. So I would stream uh, making the cosplays. It would, it would be more of an artistic stream. And at that point, I'd never actually streamed gameplay because I've always you know, wanted to show my artwork on there. Um, so yeah, I had no idea that this was going to happen. I actually started off uh, you, you know, my kind of gaming background is pretty much in open world RPGs. That's mm. what I love. And that's how I came into the world of The Witcher was obviously through The Witcher 3 as, as many people did. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I had no idea. I'm not, uh, you know, a competitive card gamer by background. I'm very much in the Gwent world because of my love for The Witcher 3. Mm -hmm. um, so it was sort of a, you know, a, a different route to end up in this role. But I think it's stood me in really good stead because I have, you know, a passion for the world that Gwent comes from, um, yeah. which is, yeah, it, it's nice. It lends an appreciation to, you know, the kind of holistic overview of the game I guess. Yeah and I think people actually really feel that passion that you have for the game and I think you've got a very natural way of standing or acting in front of the camera because <laughs> I think when, when CDPR announced that you were going to come back as the host for challenger number five everybody was happy to have you back because <laughs> I don't want to talk down the other hosts I thought they were great mm -hmm. and they did a great job as well um, but I think having this connection to the game or the world this game is taking in uh, place in uh, just brings a lot with it. I think it feels very natural for you. Oh, yeah, thank you. That's really cool. Yeah, no, I mean, I was floored, to be <laughs> quite honest, when I was asked to host Challenger. It was, it's, you know, sort of the dream. Yeah. Um, I hope I can bring something, you know, 
different to the game. Um, the, the past two hosts we had, Ash Lizzle and Flake, were fantastic. Yeah, and absolutely. I think that they provided so much technical knowledge mm -hmm. of the game, which um, you know the community were kind of asking for. Somebody who had that knowledge of Gwent and how it has evolved and, you know, just... Yeah being able to add some commentary in that side of things. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to keep that up. Um, obviously, we've still got Flake with us now. Yeah, he's sure. he's progressed onto the casting desk. Um, so yeah, it's really nice that CD Projekt are allowing members from the community to show their love for the game. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think their, their way of including the community mm -hmm. into their project is really wonderful. And speaking of preparation, um, you said that Flake and Ash brought a lot of knowledge with them. Mm -hmm. How did you prepare for the tournament? Are you playing Gwent at the moment and what was your style of preparation yeah. going into this? So it's really interesting actually. I've been asked this a few times because being a host is quite different to being a caster yeah, in terms of the preparation. Uh, we ask different questions. So in the post-game interviews we are more, uh, you know, we're not necessarily focusing on the small play-by-play, -play, mm -hmm. you know, mechanics or thought processes. It's more of a um, overall strategies mm -hmm. generally or different players approaches to the games so you might have a player who you know traditionally goes for really unconventional decks or tries Friend. to <laughs> yeah, exactly that's what I was getting at um, so people who you know try and do something different um, you have people who have been at so many different events so you might touch on that mm -hmm. you know their experience and what that lends them in the the kind of world of you know of, of the showbiz side yeah. of the esports. Um, so there's a lot more to talk about than just the play-by-play -play stuff. So knowing the players, knowing their backstories, I guess, um, caring about that and yeah, being able to tease out the sort of larger um, things that are happening in the world. So for example, um, you know, having this tournament so close to a patch, we want to know how that's affected people oh, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, so the, the, that you have a technical aspect which is slightly different to the casters, um, but then also there's quite a, um, a personal aspect. So you have to, you know, try, try and know the, the players as people and make them shine in interviews as best as possible because it's about them. Uh, yeah, so wonderful. just trying to, yeah, work to make it as easy um, as possible for the players to show their best selves. Yeah. I want to talk a bit about the players as well mm -hmm. because I think it's quite interesting uh, the mix that we've got going here. We've got six, I would say, veterans. We've got players mm -hmm. that have played in multiple tournaments and opens or challenges. Um, like, for example, Kolomon and Ajikov and even Freddy. And Tailbot. And, and Tab obviously mm. Tailbot. And um, on the other side, we've got people like Chazzy and Magpie who are there for the first official tournament. Yep. And I think it can have the, the, the pros and cons, obviously, because you don't... Um, Maybe they don't have a lot of experience, but at the same time, the opponents don't really know what to exactly. expect, right? Yes. I think that that's a really interesting um, aspect. Uh, you know, trying to figure out who might be the odds on favorite to win. Uh, lots of people give a lot of credit to having experience because mm -hmm. sometimes people think that, uh, you know, seeing the, the behind the, the scenes, the lights, the microphones, all that can be a bit daunting and yeah. maybe take away from a player's performance. But also we have, you know, these underdogs who no one's really seen in this sort of format. They could um, do something really exciting too. So trying to pick, uh, you know, a suspected winner mm -hmm. is, is quite difficult actually. Do you have um, one? I... We're gonna only release this after the <laughs> event so you can only be wrong yeah. like in one seven out of eight mm -hmm. choices here. It's really difficult because I like all the players for different reasons. Yeah. Um, you know, there's obviously the super stoic tailbot who is just like brimming with personality <laughs> underneath this veneer of like being super serious. Um, you've got Freddy who's quite similar as well, but he always has this like cheeky smile and you mm -hmm. know he's mm -hmm. up to something. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, all the players sort of have, you know, uniqueness to them, which I, I really like. Personally, oh, it's really hard to pick. It used to be quite clear cut for me because there was only one player from the UK who would kind of be around and it was Freddy. <laughs> but now we have two. Yeah. <laughs> so my mum's personal favorite is Freddy because she used to watch the Gwent Slams and support him because he was from Freddy. the UK. Yeah. This time, <laughs> oh gosh, um, I don't know. I'm gonna go with Chezzy just because it's his first time, you know, showing up 
He's also from the UK. He is, we, we discussed this actually because he's Welsh. Mm -hmm. All, most of the dryads are Welsh. Oh, so we, okay. we just, we've said he's, he's pretty much half dryad and I'm a big Scoia'tael fan. So this, you see how it all works? I'm going to go yeah, with Chesney. I can see it. I can see the picture. It works for yeah. me, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I would like him to do really well. Oh, nice. The king taking the crown. Mm -hmm. Looking back at the other events, I would say that every host and also every caster, everybody working on the on the show themselves, mm -hmm. but especially the host because they have such an influence on the on the way the show is presented to the audience. Like yep. you're the middleman in between the audience and the players mm -hmm. and the casters and everybody. Um, do you think that you have your own style of how you would present or host a show, or is it more like a, a general work ethic or a workflow that you're, you've got? Mm -hmm. um, I definitely think I have a style, although I don't think it's, uh, it's not very showy. Mm -hmm. When I host, it, it's more of like a conversation, like a, a, a sort of a well-constructed, you know, chat with your friend. That's the kind of vibe I would like to go for. Um, when you're watching long tournaments, it's a bit, sometimes it's a bit draining to have like a host who is super in your face yeah. for, you know, a whole day or multiple days of a tournament. So I personally prefer watching somebody who is, you know, informed, you know, engaging, but not necessarily um, super high energy. So I'm, I'm, I think I'm pretty relaxed, and um, I think that also helps players, especially if they don't necessarily feel very confident, mm -hmm. because the um, interviews hopefully feel a bit more like a natural conversation. Um, so that's the sort of style I go for, I guess. I mean, it's not anything groundbreaking, um, but it's what works for me, and you know, I, I think people generally respond reasonably well to yeah, it. I guess true. starting starting off as a streamer um, and you know just streaming on Twitch in, in your own bedroom essentially in front of uh, to viewers mm -hmm. you yeah it's a more of a, a chatty style and I guess that's where I get my influences from rather than a traditional like stage presence. Yeah that's actually really interesting mm -hmm. that comparison between Twitch and, and hosting because um, I think looking back at your at your hosting style at the uh, Grand Slam, I think you can see a lot of similarities there. <laughs> yeah. Like the uh, the way you converse, as you said, you want to have a, a chat with the the audience like a clo close friend, mm -hmm. and I think that's also the way your stream works. Or in general, I would say very uh, relaxed streamers try to present themselves. Mm. So it's not like you're watching. A, t a person on TV, but it's more like you're in there with them yeah. in the room, in the living room, sitting exactly. on the couch. Exactly, yeah. And that's just the nature of, I guess, where the, the hosting started, mm -hmm. you know, at home on, on Twitch. Um, but it's really funny that you mentioned Gwent Slam because that was my first ever experience hosting, um, you know, any sort of esports tournament. The a round of Gwent stuff was more structured. Mm -hmm. You know, we were doing interviews and it was in with a whole production setup. Gwent Slams were the first esports tournaments that I ever hosted, um, and after that, I went on to do uh, you know a number of, of different tournaments for lots of different games. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really had no idea what I was doing. That's why I was laughing when you mentioned it. So hopefully, um, yeah, I've I've come on a bit since then, and the, the style is a bit more polished. Yeah, <laughs> I guess we'll have to see. I mean, mm -hmm. you will probably all have seen it by now, but I'm really interested to see how the tournament plays out. Mm -hmm. um, one last question I want to ask you. Actually, okay. two. Uh, first is uh, what what level are you at RuneScape right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have been playing a lot of RuneScape. I ne didn't used to play it back mm -hmm. in in the past. I only started oh, so only about started two months now. ago. Ooh, yeah, okay. yeah. So I'm I'm sort of I've been told I'm like okay-ish. I'm around 70s in my combat level, which mm -hmm. is it's not embarrassing. And for a game which is so grindy, and yeah. you know, people have been playing it for years. You know, I'm, I'm not getting uh, made fun of anymore. Mm -hmm. So. That's where I am in, in my combat stats. Nice. Everything else is around the same. <laughs> <laughs> the second question is a serious one. Uh -huh. um, with basically hosting working out really well for you and also this general, uh, maybe not only esports, but this, this online presence thing you've got going for yourself. <laughs> uh, I mean, you also took a break off that mm -hmm. uh, for a short time, but yes. now is this uh, something you want to pursue further in the future mm -hmm. or do you see mm -hmm. yourself working in a different environment? So that's a really interesting question. It's something I quite like to talk about as well because um, these days it's kind of uh, the new I want to be a footballer mm -hmm. is I want to be a Twitch streamer or yeah. an esports star or something like that. Um, and after trying that, you know, I, I, I 
did um, streaming and hosting full time for about a year. Um, I kind of just did some self reflection and decided that long term I wanted to pursue my my science background. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, still have a love of esports and gaming, so I want to juggle them both. Um, but I actually, you know, went for my my current day job, uh, I was asked, why on earth would you, would you want to leave gaming? Um, but I, I just know myself mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I knew that keeping this as something really special that I always look forward to rather than a job was, you know, the best thing long term for me because I always want it to be, you know, exciting. Mm -hmm. This feels as exciting as the very first event I ever did and I, I don't want to get used to that, I guess. So, yeah, so, yeah just sort of knowing yourself. Um, I think that's been really good. So I, I, take, I took a little bit of a break there a while ago um, and I've come back and sort of like reassessed everything. And yes, I really want to sort of double down on the hosting again, getting back into it uh, with the new sort of setup, I guess I have. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing to hear that you found this, I would say from the outside looking very, very healthy balance. Yes, of exactly. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. So as you all can tell, there's a million things I still want to talk with you about, mm -hmm. uh, but we're out of time and you need to go prep again because tomorrow is a big day. Yes. So mm -hmm. thank you all so much for watching and thanks to CDPR for mm -hmm. letting us join in on this event because it's been truly an amazing experience mm -hmm. getting a view behind the scenes also being allowed to transfer that to you mm -hmm. and uh, yeah thanks to the Moxie Hotel this is a beautiful environment where we are well allowed to film and um, yeah we hope to be back next time hoping you will be here as well <laughs> and then we can talk more about uh, about science and where your love for science comes from mm -hmm. and all that jazz. So, yes. yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you all for watching. And there will be more interviews to come.